Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner John Cohen and I have the pleasure of speaking to we thought was going to be John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, but uh, this looks like a gangster. What's Don going on? Vito. What happened to John Mariani? It's, it's Don, Don Vito. It's uh, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, we appreciate uh, your presence for us. I want to thank you for taking care of that thing on the on the 14th Street Piers. Well, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, John, uh, we, of course, have been following you on uh, your your uh, newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet. Um, and during the COVID crisis, you actually uh, posted your latest novel, Love mm -hmm. and Pizza. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was it 30 chapters? I don't, don't remember how many chapters were there, but 30. 52. Yeah, and, and it's over. It's gone. It's done. Now you've got a second online novel called Capone's Gold. And, uh, Capone's Gold. I, hey, I'm offering you uh, something that you can't refuse. It's a great online novel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's free. All right. Well, I will, I will no longer do, do this, uh, but... Uh, but uh, <laughs> oh, there he is. That's real me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I really love this. It is different from Love and Pizza, which is a romance. It was a love story um, about uh, two nice Italian kids. Um, and this is a, a start of, well, I've written five of these crime novels now, which all involve these same two uh, protagonists, one uh, whose name is uh, Katie, and uh, she is an investigative reporter for a magazine in New York. And Katie Caputo, Caputo and um, also uh, David Greco, who is a retired NYPD policeman, police chief, who had uh, investigated the mob for years and put a lot of guys behind uh, behind bars. And uh, he joins up somewhat reluctantly with this investigative reporter because he doesn't have much uh, much regard for reporters over the years in the press. And the book is called Capone's Gold. And it's based on this. Back in the 1930s, when Capone was convicted by the IRS of tax evasion, which is the only way they could get him, um, they threw his butt in jail, um, including uh, the brand new, not particularly nice and improved uh, Alcatraz out, that's, uh, out in San Francisco Bay there. Um, he still had a lot of power. He still had a lot of friends. And he was due to get out in 13 years. It's a long stretch, but he would still only be in his late 40s. So he had a good long life uh, left to him. So to get back uh, at the feds and also to get some money coming in, he planned a heist of a um, federal truck uh, that was carrying gold bullion from Fort Knox. And in those days, Franklin D. Roosevelt, back in 33, 34, uh, uh, passed a law that no Americans could own gold. It was all going to be owned by the federal government. So consequently, it was all in one spot, uh, or several spots, several Federal Reserve spots around the country. And they moved this bullion around and so forth. So Capone uh, concocted a plot to steal a good amount of these, of the bullion. And what was he going to do with it? Well, that's part of the story of why he stole it, because he was not going to actually uh, sell it on the open market, because he couldn't sell it on the open market, because individuals are not allowed to, by law, to own gold. So what was he going to do on it? He had to sit on it for some reason. So that's the basic plot. And now this happened back in the 1930s. Capone, in prison, goes bonkers. He is dying of syphilis, which he caught, caught from a harlot uh, when he was younger, before they had penicillin, and his brain was quite literally rotting out. Uh, because of that, they, the feds released him, and he, he lived out his last two or three years in his, um, uh, his house in Palm Beach, uh, um, Florida, um, just a ravaged ex-gangster. 
Um, and no one ever know, knew what happened to the gold. Now, this was more than 70 years ago now. The novel takes place in 1990, so it's more like 50 years before. Um, and in all that time, the FBI has never been able to find out what happened to what they estimated to be something like $300 million in gold, uh, for which they offered a, um, uh, not a ransom, a ransom, offer a reward, yeah, if uh, people came up with information as to what happened to it. And um, you may remember, remember Geraldo Rivera? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay, that so what he was going after in, in the vault? What he was going after. He yeah. goes to Capone's old mansion, which still exists in Chicago there. Um, and he goes there, and they found a tunnel underneath the ground. And he goes into this tunnel. There's a brick wall there. He says, oh, boy, everything's beyond this wall, and he breaks it open, he has these engineers and so forth, guys come in with, with, with hammers and so forth, breaks it open, and there's nothing in there but a couple old beer bottles, nothing. Later on, the FBI says, we knew there was nothing back there, but Geraldo is Geraldo. And there's, there's, so this idiot is standing up with, with, with egg on his face, and he does a little dance, and goes, ta-da! Well, um, that's actually in the novel uh, also, uh, that little episode. So. My protagonists, uh, Katie and David, um, decide to investigate. Let's see if we can find out what happened. We'll just go through all the stuff, and it'll make a good story, and uh, maybe it'll take us to some exotic places. Well, it ends up taking them to a lot of places. They go to uh, Annapolis. Uh, they go to the New York Yacht Club, because uh, he was very, uh, Capone was very, very involved with gun uh, rum running, rum running uh, of liquor back in those days. And down to the Caribbean and down to Miami to his house there. They visit his house in Chicago. And all of this is real, real life stuff, kids. Um, I researched all of this. I know exactly what his house looked like on the inside. I've got pictures of it, which will be in the, in the, um, in the serialization. And uh, they eventually have to go to Italy because there's an Italian connection to all of this and uh, down to Naples. And um, I certainly won't tell you when or if they even find the gold or anything else, but it's a rip roaring yarn and uh, some danger and some, a lot, a lot of suspense. But I'm really proud to say this was, this was the first in the series of five that I've done. Um, and all I wanted to do was see if I could write a, write a mystery novel. I've never, I've never been a big fan of mystery novels. I read Arthur Conan Doyle and I read Agatha Christie. And I really like Elmore Leonard, who was a, really a character novel more than a, a, a crime, crime novelist. Um, and I've enjoyed many of them. But one thing that always bothered me was that the audience is rarely given to know what becomes for the uh, protagonists, the detective or whatever, um, the aha moment in which suddenly, aha, I, being so smart, just realize what the color blue means. And I can figure out why, who killed the guy. Hey, um, I never liked that. I thought it was very, very unsatisfying that he, because Sherlock Holmes is so damn smart, or Hercule Poirot speaks 10 different languages and sees this is in the Cyrillic alphabet. Um, that's not very satisfying to the reader who says, hey, I've stayed with you all this time, and now you're just bringing a deus ex machina, you're just springing something from a closet and telling me how it all ends. I will guarantee you, if you stick with this, my novel, Capone's Goal, up until the very end, you will know everything that my, my uh, protagonists know and nothing more until the very last page. Ah, so... Uh, and we'll be satisfied. So uh, Sat where can people uh, see this serialized version? Where will you be releasing it? Say what? Where will people be able to read this? You can read this, since it is not yet published, I'm still looking for a publisher for all five of the novels, at uh, johnmariani.com. So that's my page, and on there you can subscribe free of charge to Mariani's Virtual Gourmet, which comes out every week. So you get a chapter every week. We're into the uh, seventh chapter. It's archived, so you can go back and read chapters one, which I would highly advise doing. Don't start at chapter eight. Um, and uh, see where my uh, protagonists are going, my hero and heroine. 
And uh, I, I think they're very likable characters. This is not a hard-boiled detective who breaks teeth and, you know, uses a, uses a whip on a guy and so forth. And she's a very engaging uh, young woman, very, very smart investigative reporter, both of whom happen to come from the Bronx where I came from. So, and I think you'll enjoy it. And by, uh, by the end of chapter one, you'll say, I would kind of know how this is going to go. Yeah. Well, I loved uh, I loved uh, Love and Pizza uh, with Nikki uh, traveling around the world uh, and falling in love. Um, it was a, it was a fun fun novel, and I'm looking forward to reading starting not at chapter eight, but I'll go back to the archives and start at chapter one. I'll read Capone's Gold. I yeah. saw it in the last newsletter, but I didn't have time to get into it, so Only we'll start it. Words per week. <laughs> All that and one trip to the smallest room in your house. <laughs> well, I can't wait. I can't wait to find out that you don't share on the last page the fact that you actually found it, and uh, we're looking forward to you uh, uh, be wearing a lot of bling. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.